Hi, gents. Welcome to another episode of GentRow.com Live. I'm sitting here with uh, my friend, Mr. Mark Chris, and uh, very, very, very interesting and beautiful design shoes uh, that he's created. And uh, today we're going to talk about a couple of things with Mark and his new collection here that you can find on GentRow.com. And then we'll also post at the bottom of this his website so you can kind of uh, take a look at him and uh, what he offers there. Uh, so. Welcome. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for having Thank me, you. Tim. Thank you. And uh, I just wanted you to share a couple of things about yourself before we actually talk about the shoes. You know, okay. uh, a couple of things. Uh, so why don't you tell us a little bit about you, like when you actually started designing, uh, how you actually got into like a, what I consider like a lost art, at least this way, the way that you do it, yeah, uh, you. designing shoes like this. Thank you. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, I've always always love to design and create um, when I was a kid I basically lived with a, a pad and a pencil next to me and I would just draw whatever I was fascinated by oftentimes it was exotic cars um, planes and stuff like that and I, I would get graph paper and I would try to then create my own exotic car I remember doing mm -hmm. that and uh, just just loving to draw I mean, that's just that's where I, I pass most of my time. So the creative ability was already there. I yeah, just I just I just loved it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, just constantly drawing, and then that kind of that kind of went to another level when I got into college. I went to architecture design, and now what what college was that, by the way? Um, I, I went to FAU and then Palm Beach State. So I kind of went back and forth. Cool. So Florida Atlantic and Palm Beach State. And by the way, you're local, right? Aren't you here yeah. in Boca? Yep. Yeah. Born and raised. <laughs> Born and raised, so not many. Actually. No, there One really is few. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Minus my wife, she's too. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, my and my family my, are fr uh, from New York, so um, my parents came down here and uh, never went back. So nice. Uh, the so then I went to architecture design, and I I enjoy I just love the idea of envisioning something in your mind, and then creating it. And that's something that I've, I've done my whole life. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it was just the ability to create whatever you imagined and you know, watch, watch it transform into something that's tangible in front of you. Sure. So um, from my drawing as a kid and then architecture school, when I was in architecture school, I, I enjoyed the design part, but I realized it wasn't my passion. And as long as I can remember, I've had a, a love for menswear. Yeah. I just, I just have. I, I never really thought much about getting into shoes. I just didn't think it was a, a possible um, barrier of entry, you know. Were you always like a stylish person though? Like you always like had your outfits put together? Oh yeah. Oh, did, did you always rock the comb over, you know, and stuff like that? The <laughs> hairstyle has changed. The comb over is basically one of the few I can do. My hair is very uh, stubborn. So, <laughs> no, I used to have a buzz cut, and then yeah. it, I think it would turn into a fro for a while. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, a little fro, but uh, yeah, this has been the best one so far. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I think I'm sticking <laughs> to it. And, um, no, I've always loved to, to, you know, dress nice. I've always loved the look of a classic gentleman. Sure. Um, I, I think I, I tell myself I'm an old soul because mm -hmm. uh, I think I should have been born like the 50s, you know, the, the Dean Martin, the old Hollywood, Frank Sinatra, that whole era. Um, I just love the way men carried themselves, the way they dressed. Um, it was a certain gentleman confidence to them that it was just a charm and charisma that they had. And I think for a while that disappeared. I think it's starting to come back a lot. I do too. Yes. Yeah. You yeah. see all these young kids on social media, you know, and really blasting out like, uh, you know, you have a lot of followers, you know, blasting out different outfits and, and really the whole sartorial look of like what we see in Italian menswear. Completely. You know, so uh, I'm excited about that. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, I think especially with the whole platform, social media now, the world has gotten so leveled sure. that you're able to now communicate with people across the globe and see what's going on in an instant. And I think it's been, I think it's been a very positive effect on menswear and, and the, the whole industry. Because like, yeah, for instance, in Pitti, they have the, mm -hmm. um, in Florence. Great um, show. Great show. And it's, I, th I think it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Sure. It's really more of like a, uh, 
it, it, that show is really more of like a like who's who and stuff, you know, because right. I, I feel like those guys, it's a buying show. It's like a trade show, right. like anything else, like New York or Vegas or whatever. And uh, I feel like those guys spend more time taking pictures of themselves, you know, sitting on the ledge <laughs> and actually Completely. buying, going out looking for merchandise. Completely. You know, it's crazy. Completely. Um, right. It's more so just put on your, your you know, the best outfits you can. Or that's th right and, and get out there and express yeah. your style and your individuality and it's inspiration for a lot of people it really you is know, I follow it too you know, I, I, I take a look every year at all that stuff right yeah I'm looking to head over there I'm going to try to get there in January um, so we're just now looking into it so cool but yeah well, uh, a couple of other things here so uh, in regards to uh, your designs and uh, which are beautiful um, thank you do you have inspirations for that? I mean, are there any inspirations that maybe you've had as a young designer or as you started out and uh, that really inspired you to, to design a collection like this? Uh, yes, definitely. Uh, I mean, honestly, I pull inspiration from everywhere. Um, as I mentioned before, you know, cars and stuff like that. Um, for instance, you know, this shoe, which I'll dig into more detail later, but I designed this based off of the interior of exotic sports cars. Mm -hmm. I noticed a lot of them had suede seats, a lot of them had perforated seats. Right. And so why not make Bentley, a shoe like which yeah. is a, you know, yeah. huge for that. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so I have inspiration I, I pull from everywhere, but what, what really pushed me to get into the shoe industry was I felt there was a void. Um, I felt that there was a void in men's shoes for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, I think the big brands, they were what they were, and I think that, that I wanted to take some classic styles and make them modern, unique, different, and refined. So after, when, whenever time I look at a shoe, I'm a very visual person, so even when I go to the store, if I go to Nordstrom's or Saks or whatever, and I look at shoes, I would get, you know, what I saw that I, that I thought was nice, but in my mind, I would look at a shoe, deconstruct it, mm -hmm. and think what I would do differently. Sure. And I noticed I was doing that often, yeah. and I could not find what I was picturing in my mind. And at one point, I just decided, you know what? This doesn't exist. Right. Before someone else thinks of this idea, I'm, I'm going to do, do, do it. Sure. Yeah. I'm going to do it. So Beautiful. You know, um, Stingray was a big part of that as well. Oh man, I, I love. Uh, we'll go into that more details mm. on that. But yeah, I love the whole Stingray. You know, Thank the you. two velvets and this uh, this one right here, solid Stingray, mm. all black, and mm. has that sheen to it and the light. There's right. some lighting around here. Right. Um, it, it's a really nice look. Thank Actually, you. formal or you could you know dress completely. it down too. Completely. Um, I don't know if I'll. I, I don't plan on making a patent leather shoe for like a tuxedo yeah. shoe because I just think everyone's doing it, so it's yeah. already out there. You right, know, it has the same effect. Right, it, it has more texture to it, so it's a little different, unique. And then yeah, you can throw it on with jeans also. I like that look. Um, real quick, and then we're going to talk about uh, your shoes here. Mm -hmm. um, do you have? I know you have some big clients, but when you started uh, actually getting, you know let's just say when you started getting rolling into, because you also do uh, full custom work for a lot of people. Correct, right? yeah. correct. And you, uh, you personally design for some big names. Yes. Um, and I don't expect you actually to name any names. Okay. Um, but, uh, you know, how did that really get started? You know, for someone who's watching, and I always get emails all the time about, hey, I designed this collection, check it out, what do you think, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you, th what, what could you say to those guys that, um, you know, really got you started? What was like the turning point between like, you know, putting it on paper like you did mm -hmm. uh, to actually getting your first customer and then getting the ball rolling uh, with this type of clientele that you've created with this? Oh, you. Putting it on paper as far as... Um, like your designs and stuff, you know, because okay. uh, you, know, you really, you had mentioned before, you know, you always drew it on paper, mm -hmm. you know, what you thought in your mind. Right. I'm assuming you sketch these out before you yes. actually make it. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so why don't you, you know, how can these guys, or what were some turning points, some guidance basically you could give to these guys who, who are just starting out? Um, for me, it was design something unique that you haven't seen. So to be different, be different. And when, and when I think of my line, I think it's different. You know, I think mm -hmm. of something that's unique. It is something that you haven't seen before. Sure, you've seen slippers, but even the shape, I worked I mean, that probably took the longest time refining the shape right. and then the materials to go with it, things that you, I haven't seen. And 
just really to create a market for myself. And I think that's key. I think um, you should compete with yourself. There should be a, a purpose to what you're doing. Mm -hmm. and, and mine was really to fill, fill that void. So uh, as far as what to do, I would say just, you know, don't give up. Really, I mean, it, it sounds simple it's a, it's to say. It's a hard road. But it's uh, a very hard yeah. road. Um, honestly, everyone I told when I was doing it, everybody was just looking at me like, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you thinking? Yeah. You're going to just start trying to compete with these big brands? You're just going to make a shoe line? Mm -hmm. And I was so passionate and confident with, um, with the designs I had sketched out. And once I sent them to Italy, uh, I sent my sketches over to them to you know, see if they would even accept the work. Uh, they, looked, they looked at the designs. I remember the factory manager got on the phone with me and he was like, I would love to do this. I think this is something that's new. I haven't seen this before. I think this can do very well. Yeah. So hearing that from someone who's been, you know, I think he's been uh, in, in the industry for 50 years or so, uh, 40, 50 years, it was, it was really good to feel that and, and, and hear that. And um, I think it was just, just, you know, just keep your head down, focus. Mm -hmm. And um, when I started getting the celebrity traffic, I didn't reach out for it, to be honest. Uh, I was just, I was just, you know, rubber was on the road. I was just focused, working on building this line. Um, I gotten some prototypes back from Italy, which was very cool. Once we perfected everything, we finalized the designs, we launched, um, I would say in as early as four months, I started having... Did you really? I started having... Um, getting some emails from, mm -hmm. you know, assistants of some celebrities, some, you know, talk show hosts right. and um, some stylists who work with, you know, some big actors. And um, once that happened, I, I thought it was way too soon. I wasn't even thinking of reaching out to people at that point. But once it was, uh, came to my attention, I thought, oh, you know, this is something, maybe m move quicker, you know? Right. you know, okay, let's go. And uh, it was exciting, very exciting to see that you know, these big names who, they have brands contacting them constantly, trying to get them to sure. wear their stuff. And they, these guys, they, I mean, from my experience, they usually want free stuff. Yes. They'll rep you out, you know, they'll post it on social media, you'll get tons and tons of traffic with it, but right. um, you have to give, and it's worth it, but right. you have to give up something. Most right, of, right. Mo most of these guys. Yes, of course. Um, you know, someone with that credibility and that um, attention on them, right. they oftentimes, you know, don't want to necessarily pay for it yeah. for the you know the product. So there's um, I think there's a fine balance with that too because uh, at a certain point you know I I've, I've had you know some agencies and stuff like that reach out to me as well and at a certain point there's only so much I think you can do um, before you don't see results. Right. You know what I mean. So. Uh, I'm not really sure where to go from yeah. <laughs> with, with that. Yeah, you just said it. It's a hard road and uh, don't give up. <laughs> yeah, really. I mean, that's what it is. Um, just being persistent and believing in yourself. And, and I, I can't stress that enough. Um, I thought I was just stubborn and crazy you yeah. know, to go through with it and do it. And every day, it's just a fight. You get up and you, you can't let fear hold you back. Right. You know, and I think that is so important um, for for the, a anyone who has a dream, you know, anyone, sure. you could be an entrepreneur, you can be anything that it is that you want yeah. to be successful in, whether that's wealth, a job, whatever, I, I feel that you need to fight for it. And that's kind of, I created a line and that's the type of person I target, you know, mm -hmm. the, the people that I feel are very much like me. Well, this guy has confidence, right? Mm -hmm. The guy that's wearing your yes, shoes. This guy has confidence. confidence. Yes. He's stubborn. Yes. Right? Like you. <laughs> Most likely. <laughs> right. But right. he's a good looking guy overall. Yeah. You know? So, uh, cool. He likes to express his individuality. Um, and and I, I think that's key. You know, someone who's confident, they, they want to be different. They want to express their individuality. They want to express their creativity. Right. And this is just a platform. Really, my shoes right. are just a tool. Right, for to them to express their self. Right. And you're, you're kind of grasping that, that attitude with them, too. Thank you, you know? thank you. I, that's, I try to. So let's, let's start off with some of these shoes. Mm -hmm. um, why don't we go down the line here Absolutely. and uh, talk about these two perforated ones here. Okay. Your red yes. and black. Absolutely. So these shoes, um, these are called the Fumante, which in Italian means smoking. Mm -hmm. um, this is my smoking slipper. 
and this is also what was inspired by uh, exotic cars. So with this shoe, I wanted to get something that was subtle, so I wanted to put my logo on it, the, right. the MC, and I wanted it to be the same color, so it would be well blended. Right. And, and it all suede, right? All suede leather, quilted, perforated, um, very comfortable shoe. I wanted something that the men who enjoyed to have, whether it's a smoke, if they just enjoyed their cars. Right. It, it was a shoe that they can relate to. Um, and well, let, let, me ask, let me ask you this question real yes. quick. With all of these shoes, mm -hmm. let's say uh, a guy likes this style, but he may require a slightly wider width. Not a problem. Not a problem. Not a problem. Yeah. Um, we, we do custom work too, and that's and it's really not even that a significant increase. Um, we'll have someone say, you know, I have a wider feet. I have the shape made with a mold to make a wider one. Mm -hmm. um, if someone wants one wide, you know, and one not, if they have, you know, one foot that's wider than the other, that's also not a problem. Um, we're very, we're very hands-on and we work with our customers. That's something I've, I've really tried to do with my company is be very customer engaged and to go above and beyond. I, I stress, you know, to my team, customer service is most important. Um, at this level of luxury, you need to be there and whatever, what your customers need, right. you need to be there for them. Yeah. So we're very hands-on in that respect. Um, cool. So, so yeah. what about this next one? This, uh, is this black and white houndstooth? Yes. Check. Yes, it almost looks gray because it's a, like a micro print. It's lighting, I think, but yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a black and white houndstooth, uh, like a micro print. And this shoe is called the Sherlock. Mm -hmm. I, and then I go back to, as I mentioned before, the classic and modern. I wanted to make a slipper that had a pattern that's you know universal, everyone's right. seen it. Subtle enough where if you're far away, it looks like a gray shoe, you come close, you notice the texture. Mm -hmm. And just something that pops. Right. Also on the back of a lot of my shoes, you'll, you'll notice um, I put a diamond, which is our signature shape. We put a diamond on the back and we'll laser in the logo. So it's there, yeah. but it's subtle. Right. Because uh, again, with, with, with my shoes, I want them to be different than other right. shoes. So with this, it doesn't take away from the silhouette of the shoe, from the profile. And then just when you're walking, someone sees from behind, they'll, they'll see the diamond, they'll say, okay, that's more Chris. And that was the purpose of doing that. This shoe has actually been um, the number one seller online right now. Is it? Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's a, a great neutral shoe that can go with uh, pretty much anything. A anything, yeah, typically, you know, you'll think houndstooth is more fall, winter, um, right. but the truth of the matter is that shoe you wear all year round. All year round. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's light, it's thin, um, leather bottoms, these are all leather bottoms, so they breathe well. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, the materials are made to be comfortable, loose, light, but still that refined shape. So uh, let's go into to the uh, Stingray here, which I think is like the, uh, you know, these are some iconic shoes that you do. Thank you. Um, I already have, especially this red one, a lot of people inquiring about that. Um, but why don't you tell us a little bit about this? Yes, absolutely. Um, these, the two on the sides with the bracelet, um, they're called the Lusos, which luxury in Italian. Mm -hmm. And with this shoe, I wanted to create something more festive, more bold, um, more confident, you know, whereas some of the other shoes, they're confident, but they're also more subtle. I wanted to hit subtlety, sophisticated, and bold, sophisticated, you know, more flash. And so with these shoes, what I wanted to do was I was thinking events, you know, um, I mean, I wear them with jeans as well, right. but I wanted to make it almost like jewelry, you know, something that people have to look at. Right. You know, if, you, if you're wearing them, someone, ha people are going to look at You can't at miss them. it. You can't miss it. You can't miss it. <laughs> yeah, you can't miss it. And um, so I, I thought, you know, Stingray, beautiful exotic leather. I've, I had this gut feeling that, I have a gut feeling that I think it's going to be one of the next big exotic leathers in fashion. Um, I think it maybe, the, maybe even the new Gator, I don't know. Um, but I wanted to hop on that because I noticed there wasn't many Stingray shoes. You're I right. couldn't find any. You know, Ostrich is big. You know, it's kind of on the tail end now. Right. And then uh, uh, Crocodile is, is, I think, in yeah. right now. Yeah. You know, and right. I love Crocodile myself. Uh, me as well. Um, th there may be some Croc shoes coming. Yeah. But uh, Stingray was something that I hadn't seen yet. Sure. And so I, was, I thought, you know, 
I want to take not this, this elegant, it. anyways. Not, right. not not really at this level. I've mm. seen some nasty Stingray shoes. Right, right. right. I've, I've traveled around outside of the states. <laughs> and I've seen some really nasty Stingray shoes. Yeah, but uh, nothing like this. Right. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, so that was a big focus of mine. So when I designed the Luso line, um, I wanted something that it, it would showcase the Stingray, mm -hmm. but in a in a very jewelry and subtle type of way. So you know uh, the the decent amount of the shoe is obviously all velvet, and then just throw a bracelet on with a nice logo, right. something crisp, clean. Mm -hmm. It pops, it's bold, it's flashy. Yeah, and this, this you could really wear because you have the velvet and then also this solid uh, all stingray shoe, but you could really wear this as far as styling uh, in formal events. You could dress it down right with a nice uh, sports shirt at least and, and a uh, nice pair of uh, trousers or, or jeans even to dress it down. Absolutely. And then, of course, if you really had a cocktail occasion, something like that, that kind of uh, casual, elegant look, you could actually break this down with a suit like that as well. Oh, completely, completely. This shoe in the middle, this is called the Marco, um, and these are my full Stingray shoes. And I, this is my go-to shoe. Yeah. It, it really is because... I, I love wearing suits, but I also love wearing jeans and t-shirt. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't really matter what you're wearing. Right. The I think there's a few things that people look at when you look at gentlemen's menswear, um, or menswear. It's you look at the, I think you look at the shoes, and then maybe you'll look at the watch or something like that. But the shoes say so much about someone's style. Sure. So if you're in t-shirt and jeans and flip-flops, okay. But if you're in t-shirt, jeans, and this shoe. All of a sudden, the comp outfit is completely different. That's a good way of looking at it's it. It's completely yeah. different. Right. And um, and then when it goes to suits and tuxedos, you know, it's it's it just it just goes with everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I, and that's what I wanted to create because it's also exotic leather. So sure, it just it's all around. I like that a lot. And this is all low production, so it's not like you. This is massively sold. This is something that people you know they'll find. You can find it on jetrow.com. Mm -hmm. You can find it on your website. Yes. And. Uh, but you, you're not really going to see this in majors or anything like that, department stores. I mean, this is something that's really kind of very unique. Unique. It's, and that's, that's kind of what we focus on at gentrow.com mm -hmm. in our uh, Boca Raton store, mm -hmm. Guy Lafers. And, uh, you know, we try to find guys like him who really, you know, you're not really going to find something like that mass produced. You right. know, so. And you also have, I'm just looking here on the back. Um, so you also have your logo on the back of these as well. Actually, right. just the black. Just, just the black so one. So the red, I should show the back. Uh, you have the Stingray, mm -hmm. and then also with this one. Correct. Right, so my thing with, with the logo is it's on the shoe somewhere. Um, so when it's the front, yeah. there's tassels. It's lasered on the back where the, um, where the diamond is. And no tassels, it'll be somewhere else on the shoe. Beautiful. So. And then uh, the last here, this uh, the canvas. And what is the name of that shoe? Then? This is called the Classico. Uh, this was the first design I made. Is it really? This was wow. the first design I made, and this is, I believe, the second, second uh, biggest seller. It's. You do this in other colors, right? Oh yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I have this in beige and dark brown. I have it in black, um, in red and black, and I'm releasing another one soon. But this shoe is great because. It, it has the shape of the, you know something that could be formal. I'll wear this with a suit, but also it's very very light. It's canvas. It's comfortable. Thin leather lining, um, so it's a great summer shoe and it's also a great fall winter shoe. It just the color combination I think is what really really sure. made this pop. Oh yeah, and that it's was so elegant and clean. Thank I mean, you. It's, it really is. It really is. Um, I noticed when I I when made this prototype, I started wearing it and. Before I even released it, people start, I know start, people started coming up to me and complimenting my shoes. But it would be someone young my age would come up and say, that's a beautiful shoe, what is that? And thank you, I, you know, I said thank you. And then I would be at the grocery store and an old gentleman would walk up to me and say, that is a beautiful shoe. Mm -hmm. And I started noticing, okay, this shoe really, it hits all it's areas. It's got the appeal. It's right. got the appeal. Um, and it's hitting these different demographics, these different markets. And, and uh, yeah, so I, I refined it you know we put the diamond on the back the leather trim and we ran with it and it's just been doing great it's it's a perfect go-to shoe all around and all of these shoes okay so these are all leather bottoms right yes correct all leather bottoms everything's leather bottoms Mark i am Chris. working on i am working on a couple more casual rubber bottom shoes um 
but uh, yeah, predominantly they'll be leather bottoms. Yeah, all made in Italy. Mm -hmm. uh, Everything's handmade from start to finish in Italy. Uh, and I, I, we buy a lot of shoes, trust me, for a store and the site and everything, and, and this is really top notch as far as your, your delivery with it. I mean, that really is Thank you. special. Thank you. So, um, yeah, I wanted that was to a good something. shout out, right? Thank you. That was a good compliment. Yeah, thank I you. Wanna, you have thank any you. of these on special? Could I maybe get a special one for myself? I think I'm 11. Absolutely. Size Absolutely. <laughs> I got kidding. you. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Give me the address. It'll be on the way. <laughs> um, yeah, that's the thing. You know, you can see the quality. And that's something that's important to me. Um, not, not, you know, not to go too long-winded, but, you know, my great-grandfather was actually a, a shoe, shoe designer. Oh, really? A shoemaker, oh, in, sh a shoemaker in New York City in the 1920s. Wow. Where? Brooklyn? I, I think it's, I believe Manhattan, oh, okay. um, you know, that was er, early, early on, my grandfather and my father, mm -hmm. uh, they didn't get into the shoe business, but I remember my grandfather always, you know, he's someone that I look up to, you know, more than anybody, um, and he would always talk about, when we'd look at shoes, we'd be at the mall, he would always talk about, you know, the things that his father taught him about shoes when he was a little kid working at his father's shop, and he said something to me once, and it was so simple. Right. Um, but it really made an impact on me. And we were at maybe Nordstrom's and we were looking at one of the big designers and he was examining the shoe and he said, Mark, you see, you can't fake quality, it's clear to see. And that stuck with me, that just resonated Boom. with me. Yeah. And with my shoe line, that's something that I keep in front of mind. You need to see the quality, it needs to be there present. 100%. And yep. um, whether it's the subtle designs or the more flashy ones, you can see the quality and the craftsmanship in it. That is like, that's serious wisdom. That's great. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, you stick with me forever. Yeah, and you can see it. Yeah, you, know, you can definitely thank see you. it. So. Well, Mark, thank you very much. Oh, my pleasure. Enough. Thank you for see having you, my me. man. Yeah, it's yep. good to see you as well, You're Tom. here in Boca, so uh, we'll see a lot of each other. Absolutely. You know? I'll be coming on by. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you can check uh, Mark Chris out and his designs at gentro.com. Uh, also, markchris.com, right? Markchris.com. Right? Yes. And uh, if you guys haven't signed on the uh, on our newsletter yet, we're going to have a follow-up on this. And uh, I think you're leaving soon to, where are you going now for some of your, uh, I guess, uh, to, to work on the next collection? And I'll be flying out to Italy um, the week after next to uh, check on production for the fall. We've got We have a couple of new lines coming out, uh, a couple of new designs. So I'll be going out there and we'll have a, we'll have a team to document you know, how yeah. issues are actually made. So maybe, you know, with your uh, document, some of that stuff and send it to us. And then uh, some of the subscribers, you know, subscribe to the newsletter and uh, we'll have a little follow up on this. You can see what uh, Mark is up to for his next collection. Yeah, definitely. That sounds right? great. Wonderful. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you guys very much. And uh, until next time, I'm Tim Beasley and this is Mark Chris and this is GentRow.com Live. Thank you. Take care.